Need to Know Before Viewing Promises Documentary by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. Here is a map of Israel, which is where the documentary promises will take place. You can see that, and you'll see in its relative location, that it is south of Lebanon, west of Syria and Jordan, and east of Egypt and the Mediterranean Sea. Let's identify first the five themes of geography. Now, as you're filling in this and the rest of these notes, please make sure that you do not write in everything verbatim, which means word for word. You should be writing in as little as you can to get your point across. With the five themes of geography, I give you exactly what I want you to write in. So as you can see, here is its longitude and latitude, 35 degrees north, 35 degrees east. This is its relative location. Israel is bordered by Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, and the Mediterranean Sea. If you're looking on a world map, all eyes right here, there it is. Now it's in the northern and eastern hemispheres on the continent of Asia, and it is considered the Middle East because this is where Europe, Asia, and Africa meet. Regions. In Israel, Hebrew, Arabic, and English are the most spoken languages, with English being the, the sort of the second language that most people speak. There are six administrative districts, the Northern, Haifa, Central, Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, and Southern. The most common ones that you'll most likely hear are Haifa, which is a very holy part of the North. It's right up here. Jerusalem, and Tel Aviv. Excuse me, Jerusalem's right here. Pardon me. <laughs> okay. Now, Israel shares some of the same foods, such as falafel, a Middle Eastern food shown here. Raw vegetables and fruit, though, are very popular in Israel and its surrounding countries. Place. Israel is about 8,000 square miles, about the size of Massachusetts, to give you an idea. It's really not very big. And as mentioned earlier, it is a connector for Asia, Africa, and Europe. It contains mountains, valleys, deserts, and forests. And the big thing I wanted you to guys get across is that it is a Mediterranean climate. And please make sure you spell that correctly. Summer is April to October, and winter is November to March. And most of the rainfall occurs because if it's between the desert and the humid Mediterranean Sea but it isn't evenly distributed. Ethnic groups. The diaspora, or the dispersion of the Jews, which we'll talk about a little bit later, created many different ethnic groups in Israel. Now, the two main Jewish groups are the Ashkenazi and the, and the uh, Sephardic groups. However, there is also the Palestinian Arabs that are there as well, and Israeli Arabs. The traditions include birth, death, and bar mitzvahs, which are the religious initiation of boys who are 12 and girls who are 12. But boys should actually be 13, excuse me. Human environment interaction, or environmental interaction. Today, almost all of Israel's food is met with agricultural or farming production, okay? But only 20% of the land can be farmed. 
irrigation systems and greenhouses were built when there was no water. And due to the and most of the climate is on most of the population is on the Mediterranean coast or the west coast. Movement. Whenever you fly into Israel, you fly into Tel Aviv, which is more of the is the government center. Jerusalem is a holy city, and there are a lot of rules and regulations, and it's also not very big. It's a very small city, so it would be much it would it would have been much more complicated if they had that. How do you fly into there? Here are some of the exported goods. These are things that they take that they sell off. They have extras of. Imports are things they need. They don't have a lot. People would move to Israel because of the religious freedoms of worship at the holy sites. But they also can leave because of the uprisings and fighting with the different cultures and people. Now, we're moving on to the vocabulary you need to know. This is a lot of information. Please, of course, feel free to just listen and then write a sentence or two in, and really just a sentence or a little bit, an excerpt, a blurb about what you learned about in each of these vocab. It should be a sentence. I emphasize that again. So for Arab, we'll do this one and I'll tell you exactly what to write. Okay? Now, just listen. Arab is a cultural and linguistic. It means it's a language that people, that people speak. It refers to those who speak Arabic as, a first, as their first language. Arabs are united by culture and by history. Arabs are not a race, though. Some people have blue eyes and red hair. Others are dark-skinned, and most are somewhere in between. Now, most Arabs are Muslims, but there are millions of Christians and Jews, and just as there are Muslim and Christian and Jewish Americans. I would suggest writing out of this is that Arabs is a cultural and linguistic term. And just say that Arabic is their first language or people who have Arabic as their first language. That is all. Of course, feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Checkpoints. As you'll see in the Promises video, checkpoints play a huge role in the crisis in the Middle East, or the conflict. Checkpoints are situated at all crossings between the West Bank and Gaza, and how to get back into Israel. West Bank Palestinians cannot leave the West Bank, to travel to Jerusalem or even cross from one Palestinian area to another without a permit issued by the Israeli military. For Palestinian, checkpoints are a daily reminder of the occupation that they feel like. They feel that the Israelis are occupying their homeland. The Israelis obviously would think differently. Most Israelis feel the checkpoints make life in Israel safer that they offer some form of protection from the acts of terrorism. And this is exactly what it is said in the Promises script. Feel free, of course, to pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Occupied territories. Regions of the Gaza Strip, West Bank, and the Golan Heights, the Golan Heights are right up here, that have been occupied by the Israelis since 1967 war. Israel established a military administration to govern the Palestinian residents of the occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip. So you can see these three areas that are where many Palestinians live, but is really controlled by the Israeli military. The Gaza Strip is one of these areas and it is one of the most densely populated areas of land in the world. About 33% of its Palestinian population live in the United Nations funded refugee camps. Gaza is also the home to 5,000 Jewish settlers. Israeli settlements cover and control about 30% of the Gaza Strip. And it's right here in the southwest of Israel, right on the border of the Mediterranean Sea. The West Bank. The West Bank, including East Jerusalem, 
has an estimated population of 2,676,740, and that was about two years ago. More than 80%, or about 2,100,000, are Palestinian Arabs, and approximately five, a half a million are Jewish Israelis. The international communities consider Israeli settlements in West Bank, including East Jerusalem, illegal under international law, though Israel very much disputes this. The Heish refugee camp. As you're going to learn in the video when you meet Faraj and Sanibel, the Dehesh refugee camp is a place where Palestinian families live in the West Bank, about six miles from Jerusalem. Yet some of them have never been able to see Jerusalem themselves. The camp was established by the UN in 1949 after the newly created State of Israel. Hamas. Just over a decade after its foundation, Hamas, an acronym that is the Arabic that in Arabic stands for the Islamic Resistance Movement, has turned into a major player in the Palestinian politics and a thorn in the side of Israel. It's thought of as a terrorist group movement, and the movement's popularity has grown largely because of the military operations against Israeli targets and its network of social services provided to the Palestinian citizens. Now, some would argue that one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. But to many, to both sides, they each have their own point of view and reason for this belief system. To the Palestinians, these people are heroes. To the Israelis, they're terrorists. Hezbollah is a name for a radical Shia Muslim group from Lebanon. The literal translation is Party of God, and it was formed in 1982 with the goal of creating an Islamic Republic in the country. You'll learn about this group when we meet Sanibel, as her father is a part of it. The Holocaust. The Holocaust was a systematic, bureaucratic, and state-sponsored persecution and murder of six million Jews by the Nazi regime and its collaborators. It's Greek for sacrifice by fire. And it's thought by many to be the, the end of it in 1945 is what allows for the creation of the Jewish state in 1948. Intifada. The first intif intifada in n December 1987 was a mass uprising against the Israeli occupation that began in the occupied Palestinian territory. Methods used by the Israeli forces during the uprising resulted in injuries and heavy losses among the civilians of the population. You're going to learn about this and learn about the, the point of view from both the Israelis and Palestinian children. The second intifada was, a deep, was, was caused by the deeply flawed peace process initiated in Oslo, Norway. Combined with daily frustrations and humiliation felt by the Palestinians, it converged to ignite a second intifada beginning in late September 2000, which is right at the end of the filming of our documentary Promises. If you feel I've been going too fast, feel free, of course, to rewind. And again, I'm only looking for a sentence or two, at most. Israeli Arabs. These are people that are Arabs that have remained in the state of Israel, and they've been granted citizenship, and the, which gives them the right to vote. But they're also considered to be second-class citizens, even though today they make up about 20% of Israel's population. Jerusalem, located on a plateau in the Judean mountains between the Mediterranean and Dead Sea. 
It is one of the oldest cities in the world and is considered the holiest city to three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Here is how the old city of Jerusalem is separated, and it has spread out a little bit since then. You can see here in the Christian quarter, the cathedral, one of their most holy sites. In the Jerusalem, in the Jewish quarter, their most holy site, the wall. The Dome of the Rock, right here, is a Muslim, is a very famous Muslim uh, site. And the cathedral is a famous Armenian site. Let's first start talking about the Temple Mount. Okay? Now, the Temple Mount is one of the oldest and most important religious sites in the old city of Jerusalem. It is the holiest site in Judaism, which is regards as it places God's divine presence is manifested more than in any other place. the Dome of the Rock, an enshrined rock from which Muhammad is said to have ascended to heaven. It's located on a rocky outcrop known as the Mount Moriah, where, according to the Jewish belief, Abraham offered his son Isaac as sacrifice. The inscription inside the building glorify Islam as the final true revelation. Just as in Christianity there were revelations, Islam believes that this is sort of the next step. And it is a culmination of faiths of Judaism and Christianity. The building is actually not a mosque, but a cybrium, which is erected over a sacred site. Alaska Mosque, literally called the farthest mosque, is part of the complex of the religious building in Jerusalem, known as either the Majaj Mount or Al-Haram Ash Sharif, the noble sanctuary to Muslims, and the Temple Mount to the Jews. It states that in Islam, Muslim, uh, that Muhammad ascended to heaven from the mount in the year 621, making the mosque the third most holy shrine in Islam. The Western Wall, also sometimes known as the Wailing Wall. And you'll see this here as we visit two student, two of them, the, the twins, Yaakim, Yaak, ah, <laughs> Daniel and uh, Yaakim, and also, um, not Moish, we're going to visit Shlomo, excuse me, as when we visit them there. This is the holiest site in the Jewish world, and it is part of the retaining wall supported by the Temple Mount built by Herod in 20 BC. And after its destruction in 70 AD, notice the date, 70 AD, remember that date. Okay, Jews were not allowed to come to Jerusalem until the Byzantine period, which would almost be probably 500 to 1,000 years later, when they could visit only once a year on the anniversary of the destruction of the temple and weep over the ruins of the holy temple. Because of this, it's known as the Wailing Wall. Judaism, a Jew, is a monotheistic, mono means one, theistic belief. And they believe that there is one God who created and rules the world. They do not share one common ancestry or biological distinction. People of many different races have become Jewish over the years, and many of them are different nationalities. A person who was born to a Jewish mother or has gone through a lengthy process of conversion is considered a Jew. There are also non-religious Jews or secular Jews, as we'll meet when we meet the twins. Torah. It's 
basically their holy book. And there are five books in there. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Shabbat. Shabbat is, or Shabbat, uh, Shabbos, is the day of rest for Jews. It's the seventh day of the week. And it takes place Friday night through Saturday. It is a festive day when Jews exercise their freedom from regular labors of everyday life. It's an opportunity to contemplate spiritual aspects of the life and just to spend time with family. There's candle lighting, blessings, and a fest three festive meals are given in the evening, morning, and late afternoon. When we meet Moish, we're going to meet his little sister who actually will have a very uh, funny incident with a chair. She's trying to get ready for a Shabbos dinner at their house. Muslim, a person who submits to the will of God. They call Allah, A-L-L-A-H, and accepts Islam and all of its tenets. One becomes it Muslim by saying the Shahada, a testimony. There is no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger or prophet of God. There are five pillars from which to follow. Muhammad. He was a prophet and the founder of Islam. The Quran. And this is their holy book, basically. Um, there, I mean the Muslims' holy book. Uh, this is the book that Muhammad believed he received from the angel Gabriel over a period of 23 years. And the stories in it are very similar to the earlier prophets of the Jews and Christian scriptures. Zionism or Zionist it was a movement, a liberation movement of Jewish people who holds that the Jews are entitled to a homeland in the land of Israel. Theodore Herzl the father of modern Zionism, formally organized the Zionist movement in 1897. Benjamin Netanyahu. He was the youngest prime minister in Israeli history. And he was one of the, he was one of the most right-wing and cons controversial leaders in country history. His election in 1996 was one of the narrowest margins represented and a major turning point in Israeli politics. Although defeated in 1999, he now is back in office as their financial finance minister. Palestinian. Today, the term refers to Arabs, Christians, Muslims, and Druze, whose historical roots can be traced to the territory of Palestine as defined by the British Mandate Borders. Terrorist. One who utilizes the systematic use of violence and intimidates intimidation to achieve political objectives while disguised as a civilian non-combatant. And I hope that you recognize that this word holds no political, racial, ethnic, or religious terms in it. Anybody can be a terrorist. Some of these are some of the important dates that you're going to hear about through there, through the through the movie, uh, the documentary. 70 CE, the Jewish diaspora or diaspora after the conquest by the Romans. In the 1880s and 90s, the Zionist migration begins, and people start moving back to the land of Israel. 1919 to 1922 is, World War I, is the end of World War I, and after it's done, it takes three years, and the, after the Ottoman Empire falls, who controlled Israel, or Palestine at that time, as it was called, the, Brit, uh, the British government is given control of it a mandate, a trusteeship, to own, to operate 
that government and area. 1945 sees the end of World War II and the Holocaust. And then on May 14th, 1948, the establishment of the State of Israel. Just as July 14th is important, July 14th, July 4th is important here, so is May 14th to them. 1995, while attending a peace rally, Yitzhak Rabin is assassinated by a right-wing Jewish extremist who, who was opposed to the peace process. So even Ju within the Jewish groups, there is disagreement. Within Palestinian groups, there is disagreement. From 1995 to 2000, the film Promises is made during this period between the Oslo Accords and the Second Intifada. And this story you are about to witness is one of the is a great story about children and their views on the world. I hope you enjoy the the documentary and we'll see you soon.